Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And they have wares, if you have coin. The Khajiits are indeed one of the most fascinating creatures to inhabit the lands of Skyrim and Tamriel. Resembling a unique cross between man and feline, they're natives to the southern province of Elsewhere, and have developed a reputation across Nern for being shroud thieves and the cunning salesmen. Known to have their own secretive language, when Khajiit speak English, or the common tongue, they adorably speak in the third person. Outside of bandit camps, the most frequent place we encounter these fluffy fellas is in their various roaming merchant caravans, which sell goods all across the Nine Holds. But a race this unique, this stealthy, and this far from home in a game as detailed as Skyrim are bound to be rife with all sorts of intriguing facts and hidden characteristics, unknown to most of the world. So today we'll be going beneath the fur, as we take a look at five things you probably didn't know about the Khajiits of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. But first, before we dive too deep into the lore of these curious kitties, a quick word from today's sponsor, X-Sheets, blankets for gamers. After a long day of gaming, you need rest. And now you can get it with X-Sheets, the only LED-powered bed sheets made for gamers. Enjoy maximum nighttime visibility and supercharge your... Okay, okay, we're just messing with you. X-Sheets aren't actually real. This video is really sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, the stunning mobile RPG that thrusts players into the dark fantasy world of Teleria, featuring hundreds of different champions, multiple playable factions, over a dozen locations in a fully voiced campaign, and incredible PvP and PvE multiplayer. For new players, the new daily login rewards have recently been doubled to 180 days, allowing those who routinely sign in access to more gems, silver, and more including a free Legendary Champion. Head on over to the description, and if you're a new player joining in with my links, you'll get 100,000 silver, an energy refill, daily XP booster, and even a free champion, the Adjudicator. All appearing right in your inbox. What are you waiting for? There's never been a better time to dive into Raid Shadow Legends. Available for free on mobile devices and desktop. Starting off, did you know that Khajiit isn't really a race? It's a species, like human or elf. And just like there's various races of human beings and elves, such as Bretons, Red Guards, High Elves, etc., there's different races, or breeds as we call them, of Khajiit too. The one you're probably the most familiar with, and certainly the most iconic, are the Cathay. The large, two-legged critters that resemble a mix between man and cat. These are the Khajiits present in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion and in Skyrim. However, the Cathay are just one of about eight possible breeds, each boasting remarkably unique characteristics and features. There's also the Ohms, a type of Khajiit that lacks a tail or any fur and boasts a straighter back. These creatures look a lot more like a wood elf than a cat, and are known to commonly decorate their face with various paints to distinguish their true feline identity. In the Elder Scrolls 1 arena, these were the Khajiits we could find and play as. Then there's the Alfique, tiny four-legged critters that are basically house cats, though known to be much, much more intelligent. They're among the many Khajiit races we encounter in ESO. Fun fact, they find being cuddled and played with very patronizing. The Senshi are another four-legged kitty, though they're more like lions and tigers than house pets, and are thought to often be ridden into battle by their fellow felines. Lastly, the Suthe are pretty much indistinguishable from the Cathay, looking like cat people who stand on two legs, though they have a more cat-like face. They appeared in the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, there are a few other Khajiit breeds, again, in total there's around 8 of them, some of which we literally just know nothing about, but you get the idea. They come in all shapes and sizes. Interestingly, the determining factor in what race a Khajiit is born as has virtually nothing to do with its parents, but instead, it has to do with the moon and its phases. You see, normally, it's fairly easy to predict what race a human or elf is going to be born as by looking at its mother. Kids in Skyrim will always be the same race and species as their mom, 
though will often borrow many characteristics and traits from their father. Well, what race a Khajiit will come out as is based on the phases of the moons, Secunda and Masser, and is totally indifferent to the breed of the mom, or even the dad for that matter. Any Khajiit conceived when both moons are full will always be born as a Senshi, or Lion Khajiit. When Secunda is full, but Masser is waning, an Alfik, or House Cat Khajiits are conceived. When Secunda is full, but Masser is totally new and dark, we get the Ohms, who look like the Elves. You get the picture, I don't want to bore you by going through each one. Just know that the biology of these felines is far, far more complicated and complex than what a simple playthrough of Skyrim, or any other Elder Scrolls game, may lead you to believe. Next on our list, Khajiits may be the only playable race, well, only playable race alongside the Argonians, that are believed to be true natives to Tamriel. And, if ancient reports are to be believed, their clans and civilization once spread across the entire continent, rather than just the province of elsewhere. At least, up until the arrival of men and elves. We don't really have much of an idea what Tamriel was like before the arrival of the first elven explorers, because they were the first people who actually bothered to write stuff down, and human beings didn't start migrating to the continent until tens of thousands of years after the elves did, but it seems that as soon as the Myrrh started showing up on Tamriel's shores, they were encountering Khajiit tribes and clans. The book, Father of the Nibbin, tells the tale of Topol the Pilot, one of the very first Aldmer to ever start exploring Tamriel. He sailed up and down the land's rivers, sometime in the very early Marethic era, around 20 or 15,000 years prior to the events of Skyrim, long before there were any cities or even elven colonies on the continent. In fact, the reason the book about him is called Father of the Nibbin is because he was the first person to discover and name the Nibbin Bay in Cyrodiil. Anyway, in the book, it's mentioned that as Topol was sailing up a river in modern-day Cyrodiil, he and his crew noticed that they were being followed by, quote-unquote, four and two-legged cat demons, who were running alongside his ship on a beach and attacking his crew whenever they got too close to the shore. This seems to be the earliest recorded sighting of Khajiits ever, and the fact that they were spotted so deep upriver in Cyrodiil, so far from elsewhere, is huge. We also have texts written just a few hundred years after Topol's exploration, as the elves were establishing kingdoms and settlements in modern-day Valenwood, and they mention that elven colonists often feared going into certain parts of the forest, as, quote, great jungle catmen would attack them. The book, Before the Ages of Man, written by elven historian Akantar of Shimmerine, is all about what Tamriel might have looked like before the arrival of humans and elves. And the author theorizes that Khajiits, among other beast folk, dominated the whole place for thousands of years, until the arrival of the more intelligent, advanced, and organized elves slowly drove them away from the many regions they used to control. It's very possible that elsewhere isn't really the native homeland of the Khajiits as we all understand it to be today, but simply the last place their species truly dominates after men and myrrh took over everywhere else. Unfortunately, it seems that before coming in contact with the elves, the Khajiits themselves didn't even understand how to write stuff down, so they don't know a whole lot about their own history. Whatever the case, it would appear incredibly possible that before the arrival of the Nords, before the rise of the Snow Elves, Skyrim really belonged to the Khajiits. Coming in at number three. Oh, this is one of those short, yet very sweet ones. So, whenever a character in The Elder Scrolls V enters combat, their facial expressions will often change to become more menacing in appearance. They'll often grimace their mouth, squint their eyes, and perk their eyebrows downward to demonstrate their frustration. Well, something unique that happens to Khajiits when their facial expression turns to aggressive is that they'll perk their ears backward. This is, of course, a common sign of fear and hostility of cats in the real world, who typically fold their ears back when encountering a potential foe. 
I just find it quite neat to imagine that someone at Bethesda's job for an entire day was probably to develop a folded cat here animation just to line up with reality that much more. It's little things like this that make Skyrim great. And keep food on my table, too. Anyway, moving on. For fourth spot, didn't you know that it's actually possible to have an entire Khajiit caravan show up at the Dragonborn's wedding? Okay, so admittedly, this isn't the most practical thing to do. It's not necessarily going to give the player character a lot of in-game advantages or anything, but it's a fun little trick and comes with some potential curious implications with the game's lore. So, when the Dovahkin does choose his spouse and decide to have a wedding, there of course will be a large number of guests that show up. These characters are randomly selected from a large pool of NPCs that either you and or your follower have very strong positive relationships with. So, this usually means that you'll get former followers or people you've completed quests for showing up to represent you and your spouse will have close relatives or really strong partners, such as their parents or a sibling. Well, meet Isolda. You can probably already see where this is going. She's a Nord merchant that lives in the city of Whiterun. Notably, Isolda doesn't have any family members or really any friends listed in the game's creation kit. She's on the lonely side. Nonetheless, this woman has some very big dreams. She's an aspiring merchant who hopes to one day dominate the trade scene here in Whiterun, and maybe all across Skyrim too, if she's a little lucky. She currently makes most of her money doing deals with various roaming Khajiit caravans who stop by Whiterun's walls. Apparently they offer her some very good deals, and they're helping her get quite the leg up in the scene. Well, it just so happens to turn out that Isolde is set to have very strong positive relations with nearly every single Khajiit caravan trader in the entire game, as well as those Khajiit caravans' guards and staff. So, if we players decide to propose to Isolda and marry her, at your wedding, there's a strong chance that you'll get an entire caravan's worth of Khajiit characters who will show up. Oftentimes, various merchants mixed and matched from different caravans will all appear, and they'll actively be selling, briefly turning Riften's Temple of Mara into the biggest marketplace in the entire game. After the wedding, they'll simply walk out of the city and head back to their respective camps, or move on to a new town. Something that makes this especially notable is that it's practically the only way to get a Khajiit character that's not the Dovahkin themselves or a follower inside a walled city. You see, according to Skyrim's lore, Khajiits are not allowed inside any of Skyrim's walled settlements, as the native Nords apparently are just too suspicious of them, and the kitties have a reputation for thievery, lying, and mischief. It's unsure just how strict or serious this rule is, maybe it's just a series of local customs, or perhaps it's a law directly issued by the High King. But no matter, it's impossible to find a Khajiit character, other than yourself and a companion, in any of the towns. Unless you have a wedding like this. And so, by having a wedding with Isolda, not only are you marrying an ambitious businesswoman, but you're also making quite the social statement. And finally, last on our list, one of the most important events to ever occur in Khajiit history are, or were, the Void Knights. A period for about two years, just following the events of the Oblivion Crisis, which took place around 200 years prior to the events of Skyrim, in which the two moons, Masser and Secunda, completely disappeared. They vanished. Now, as you can already tell from our first fact, the moons are incredibly important in Khajiiti society. I mean, their faces literally determine what breed your child will be born as, not to mention a whole bunch of additional religious significance. So, it seems quite obvious that their disappearance would cause some great distress. Funnily enough, we don't actually know what happened to Khajiits born during this time period. Did they come out some weird mutated race? Were there just no Khajiit births at all? The lore is very unclear. Nonetheless, after about two years, the Void Knights mysteriously ended, and the moons just popped back into the world. Conveniently, this was right around the time the Thalmor were gaining power in the Somerset Isles, and they claimed that they were responsible for bringing the moons back. 
promising their Khajiit brethren that it was the work of the Thalmor that had saved their society. This, after a brief internal power struggle, finally resulted in the Khajiiti province of elsewhere formally leaving the Second Empire, and instead joining the Aldmeri Dominion. Now, as you might imagine, the Void Knights are a huge subject of speculation and discussion within the community, and the extent of the Thalmor's influence over this whole debacle is quite possibly the most contested point. Some people have argued that maybe the Thalmor really did bring the moons back and save the Khajiiti people. They are an incredibly magically gifted group of individuals. It's not totally impossible. Others suggest that it's more likely the Thalmor had absolutely nothing to do with the event, that the moons disappeared and reappeared randomly for unknowable reasons, and the elves merely claimed responsibility for bringing them back, knowing that it would cause the Khajiit to flock to their side. We sadly don't have a 100% canon answer. However, perhaps our most likely candidate for the truth comes from Michael Kirkbride. Now, I've talked about this man quite a few times before in previous videos, but just in case you're unaware, Michael Kirkbride is a former writer for Bethesda Game Studios, who worked on multiple Elder Scrolls titles, including Redguard, Morrowind, and even the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. He ended up leaving the studio before the release of Skyrim, and is uncredited with any of the work on that game. However, despite exiting the studio, Michael continued and it still continues to this day to write Elder Scrolls-related stories and narratives. Pretty much all of this work produced after his exit from Bethesda can and should be considered fan fiction. It's not technically part of the universe's canon, or truth. However, given the fact that he actually worked at Bethesda and has considerable insider knowledge of what the writers are planning, we should take his writings a bit more seriously than your average blogger. I digress. In 2014, Kirkbride was doing a bit of a rapid-fire Q&A on his website, basically having users just ask him all sorts of Elder Scrolls-related questions that he would respond to. This, again, was in 2014 after his exit, so his answers can't technically be considered canon. Nonetheless, someone asked him, Hey Michael, what do you know about the Void Knights? And he quickly said this. Quote, eugenics experiment, with a side dish of don't redacted with us." End quote. He seems to be indicating that the Thalmor are actually the ones who made the moons disappeared, and then made them reappear, sending a bit of a message to all of Tamriel, and especially the Empire. The eugenics experiment part comes from a long-standing theory within the Elder Scrolls community, and even some Elder Scrolls characters, that the Khajiit are somewhat related to the Elves. It's likely that if they were responsible for the Void Knights, part of their motivation for making the moons disappear is to see if that would make the Khajiit become more, or less, Elf-like. Regardless, despite being backed by a former writer at Bethesda, this is still just a theory. Though, it would seem very likely that the Great Void Knights, which shaped Khajiiti society for the next 200 years, were perhaps the greatest hoax in Tamriel's history. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five things they never told you about the Khajiits in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. Which of these fun facts or trivial easter eggs did you find to be the most intriguing? And what unknown details about Skyrim, or any other game for that matter, do you know of that we've yet to tackle? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.